I have to confess that everything I learned, I had to learn the hard way, in the trenches, just like all of you. The dis disclosures for today's program are in your binder. This was obviously a group effort. These are our learning objectives for today. With apologies to David Letterman, I'm going to tackle the 10 things I most love to hate about lupus. And if you can think of something I've left out, let me know. But we'll start out with pathogenesis, diagnosis, how to measure disease activity, what to do about quality of life, prednisone, how to pick second line agents, how to track lupus nephritis, what to do about atherosclerosis, cognitive impairment, and thrombosis. It's an awful lot, so let's jump right in. Is lupus really such a mystery disease? I think we should give credit to all the basic scientists who have taught us so much about the pathogenesis of lupus. So on this slide is Immunology 101, but we're going to do it in one minute. It is the normal immune system on the slide, but in lupus, every single part has gone awry. And let's start at the top with the plasmacytoid dendritic cells. They're important because that's where hydroxychloroquine works, but they make interferon. And as you know, about 50% of lupus patients have the interferon gene signature. Interferon matures the myeloid dendritic cells. They're the ones that present antigen, and of course they present self-antigen in lupus. But also, BAF, also called BLIS, the B lymphocyte stimulator protein, breaks off from myeloid cells and it is the growth or survival factor that allows autoimmune B cells to survive. That's why it's a potential target to treat lupus. And of course, as you know, B cells make autoantibodies that cause the immune complexes that then activate the plasmacytoid dendritic cells. Think of this as an equal opportunity slide. So many things go wrong in lupus. It means that lots of companies have potential targets. We'll concentrate when we talk about second line therapies on the new data on targeting bliss. But of course, it's possible to target interferon, target interleukin-6, target B cells in different ways, and target T and B cell co-stimulation. This is called a Manhattan plot. Did you know why? Because it looks like the Manhattan skyline. But it turns out that two-thirds of lupus is genetic. Isn't that amazing? And nearly all the genes that predispose to lupus have already been discovered. They're now looking for ones that have very small prevalence. But still, the most important genes in terms of risk of lupus are those HLA genes. You see that that's almost off the map in terms of this Manhattan plot. But it follows, doesn't it? If lupus is two-thirds genetic, it must be one-third environmental. UV light is still the most important environmental factor. Remember that in lupus patients that have already been diagnosed, they're still going to get flares from ultraviolet light. And you must pick a sunscreen that blocks both UVA and UVB. Because sunscreens are so expensive, Patients like to put them on in a very thin coat, but they also work as a physical blocker. So they have to slap the stuff on and half an hour before they go outside. Drugs can incite SLE, not just drug-induced lupus. Echinacea is one of the ones that must be forbidden in lupus. We published on our unfortunate series of SLE patients who decided to take echinacea every day and then developed lupus nephritis. But the drug that's been known about for the longest period of time is actually trimethoprim sulfa, which can incite the clinical onset of lupus, but also causes flares of lupus in about one-fourth of patients who take it after clinical onset. Smoking is a risk factor for so many autoimmune diseases.